Hello, Peter Wood here, Greenwood Days. Um, welcome back to the garden and another short film for you. Today we're going to be looking at the shaving horse, draw knives and maybe do a bit of draw knifing as well. But the first thing I'm going to do is introduce you to this shaving horse. Uh, this shaving horse is a Bodger's, le a Bodger's shaving horse. Um, there are lots of other designs out there as well, but this is a very simple one. Nice and easy to make, you can knock it up relatively quickly and works very well. It works very well, but specifically it works well for short pieces of timber or relatively short bits of timber. Um, nice and easy. You've got a pivot there, a long arm with a footrest foot rest at the bottom and a clamp at the top. Um, and that's all it does. With a short piece of wood, it's easy to turn it round keep it working, keep on moving it, but if you're working much longer pieces of timber, maybe shaping the back of a chair or something like that before you steam bend it, then it's a bit more of a pain with a longer piece you've got to keep moving it all the way out, turning it around and pushing it back in again. So other designs may be better, but it works very well. I've used this for many years and um, in some respects there's no need to upgrade. But let's introduce you to the different parts. So to start off with, we've got the swinging arm. Uh, it's held on by a peg, so you can adjust it up and down. And then let's take that out there. And then the side arms is basically one piece of wood cleft down the middle. So you've got a matching pair. You'll see some of them are nice and straight. Some of them you've got a nice curve on. Depends what you want. Um, but it's better to drill the holes through um, for the footrest, for the pin, and for the clamping at the top, uh, drill the holes nicely in line while the piece of timber is together. And then if you cleave it straight down the middle, then you know they're gonna line up. After that, you can shape these to whatever shape you want. Um, at the bottom, this is a bit of branch wood, and then the sides are turned, so you've got a nice long distance there to rest your foot. And at the top, we've got the clamping bit that's round, pegs coming out, but we've got it flat on this side, um, just done with an axe, and that gives you more surface area to clamp, but if you want a bit more pressure, you can turn it round, and then you've got a point of pressure there. We've also cut out an angle here, so that if you're shaping a piece of wood um, that will fit in there, then that gives you a bit more of a secure clamp. Um, on this one, again, we put a few pads of leather on there, not really necessary most of the time, but um, I was inspired on one day to do that. Let's move that out of the way. Uh, we've now got the, a board to clamp onto. That's just held by a little peg. Um, it can move around. We've got a hole there that's bigger than the peg, so it can wobble a little bit. You've got a bit of adjustment room, and then straight into a hole there. You can see I've glued on a piece of leather. Gives you a bit more friction, stops the wood um, coming free but I've used it for many years without a, a bit of leather there some people put a bit of sandpaper some people put a bit of grip tape there just to give a bit more um, grip for when you're working the wood um, we've got uh, this little lump of wood that's been cleft out of a piece of wood but you'll notice it's got different lengths for each side that means you can adjust this for height so it can be high up just quickly tip it down and it's lower put this back in that'll give you a bit more of an idea so that gives you a bit, le a bit more room flip it down you've got less room depending on where you want to clamp it this bit I might want to clamp it up high but if I want to come a little bit lower flip it down and I can push my foot a little bit more I like a nice long length between the peg and the footrest. It gives you a bit more leverage. You don't need to put as much pressure with your foot because you've got more leverage. Other people prefer, prefer different ways of doing things. Do um, comment below, do um, PM me, do email me. If you've got a different way of doing it, do put in your ideas, nice and politely, but put in your ideas because there's lots of ways that I haven't seen. Um, there will be other ways of working and if you send me your ideas, if they're good ones, I'll share them. 
Um, I'd like to be taught as well, so if you've got different things that you might think would be better, do let me know. It's nice to have a dialogue rather than me just talking to the camera. So um, do, do contribute that way. Um, let's show you the rest of this shaving horse. I'll take that off. Just to show you the body, the body is just a piece of ash. Um, you, I've seen much thicker ones, I've, been, I've seen thinner ones. Um, you notice here, I've carved out here so you've got a bit more room, room for the inside of the legs. Um, do customise it so it's, so it's comfortable for you. You can carve out a seat on the back, you can put a seat on top, um, a little cushion, something that makes it a bit more comfortable, because sometimes you could be sitting on this all day working the wood. You'll notice at the back we've got two legs, they lean backwards and they lean out to get a bit of stability, and the front leg just leans forward just to get it nice and solid. And that basically is the shaving horse. Put this back on. These legs, by the way, knock out so it's easy to disassemble and you can put in the back of a car. So I say this is one, this is a Bodger's shaving horse. There's lots of other more complicated ways of, um, of designing and building a shaving horse. In case you're interested and you want to build one, this is a book I recommend. Shaving Horses, Lap Shaves and Other Woodland Vices by Sean Hellman, a friend of mine. Um, he publishes it himself. It's a um, crafty little press. If you go on his website, he'll send you one out. If you're on one of my courses, then I'll have a stack of these that I can sell to you as well. It's got quite a few different designs of shaving horses in there, plus a few other holding devices and a little bit on draw knives and sharpening. Well worth the admission price. Um, as I say, contact Sean or come see me and it's a, it's a book well worth having. Okay, that's the shaving horse so far. We'll do a little bit of draw knifing in a minute and show you how that works. See you in a bit.